Hi, this is Chris at Chris Swift Studio, and today we're going to be playing around with audio levels and taking a look at the audio bars, uh, correct sound levels for audio, different techniques we can use for adjusting volume, and also stuff we can do in terms of fading the audio. Thanks for coming. The first thing we might want to take a look at is the audio levels here and the audio bars right there. And we can see that. Now if we want to see them a little bit better than that, we can just click there once and there they are. And you can hover here to expand that to make them even bigger or smaller. You can see these are stereo channels I have as I only have the uh, left and right channel. Now I've also put in a, uh, a sample surround sound 5.1 track, uh, but you can see I'm still only seeing left and right. So the way to get around that is what you need to do is deselect all these clips, click on the project once, and now I can modify the settings of the project, come into audio channels, and set those as surround. And when I do that, I will now see my six channels for surround sound 5.1. I usually don't do surround sound, so I'm going to go ahead and just uh, change that back to stereo. See my two channels, left and right. Okay, uh, now a little bit about correct sound levels. Uh, you can see just by hovering over the audio level, it will tell me where I am. I'm at minus 12 decibels right here. This is at zero decibels. Um, when you bring a clip in, it's just going to be set at zero decibels. Uh, here I've got an extra music track that's set at zero decibels also. So you don't want to be getting close to uh, zero decibels at all. You can see right there I've hit up into the red for a second on this track. I make sure that I'm never close to zero decibels. When you hit minus six decibels, you're going to start seeing yellow, a little bit yellow here, and that means you're getting up into the danger zone and a little bit over zero, then the uh, audio starts distorting, which sounds really awful. And you need to be as careful about your audio as you do about your video. Uh, it'll make all the difference in the world. So. I reduce all these to minus 12 for the dialogue, and then I'll play around uh, with other soundtracks uh, that I might add on. Okay, uh, now let's go to uh, correcting and modifying uh, audio vo volume. The first thing I want to do is change my clip appearance and click here, and click here to get only the audio waveforms. And also I would click here just to make them taller so I have a better idea of what's going on. Click anywhere, and I would just bring that guy up a little bit. There we go. So let's uh, do some of that now. Let's say I want to adjust the volume of this one. There are several different ways to do this. Number one, come up to modify, adjust volume, and you can uh, adjust it up by one or down by one uh, there. Um, the other thing you can also do is through the inspector window. So with a clip selected, make sure you have your audio tab on and there's your volume. You could either click and drag the slider up and down or you can hover over the number until you get these little double arrow dealies and go up and down to adjust it that way. And the other way to do it is the keyboard shortcut, which I prefer, which would be control plus or control minus. Let's put that back at zero, exactly. Okay, good. Now, one thing you might notice here is you see these little, like, shadows, if you will, of a waveform. Um, here, you can see them better right down here. Now, what these are, th these give you uh, uh, the accurate idea of what your waveform looks like, because if I were to come in here and I start squashing this down further and further, well, the waveform really flattens out, and I can't get a good idea of exactly what the waveform is doing, and so you can see these to see uh, a better representation of uh, the changes in the amplitude of your audio track. Okay. Now, if you don't see these, and you 
want to see them, you go into preferences. So that would be command comma to bring up the preferences. And you go into editing and there it is, show reference waveforms. And I have that clicked on so I can always see those guys. Okay, now let's do some uh, specific uh, changes to audio levels and there are a couple of ways to do that. Let's say we want to change, we want to start playing here and, and, and let's just do this. Let's just bring this guy up a little bit just to make it pretty awful. Okay, and now I'm going to come over here and what I'm going to do is deselect everything and I'm going to play by hitting the space bar uh, and then when I hit the beginning of the range that I want to adjust I'm going to press the I key and then for in and then I'm going to press the O key for out to select a range. So let me press the space bar to get going and then as soon as we come around to just about here I'm going to hit the I key and Then I'm going to hit the OK, and there it is. Once I have that range selected, I can come in here and hover, get that little up and down guy, drag it down. Click somewhere else so you can get a better idea of what's going on, and you see your keyframes have been set here. And now you're pretty free to just hover over them and click and drag and do a, a whole bunch of adjustments onto these guys. You can pull it down, pull it up. You can pull it left and right. Same thing with this guy. Yeah, left and right. That's one way to do it. Now that, that keyboard of pressing the I and the O is uh, actually pretty slow. I don't like it very much, to be honest with you. So one thing you can do, which is better, as far as I'm concerned, is simply collect, uh, 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 select the range selection tool uh, or the keyboard shortcut R and you get this little symbol there. It looks a little bit like a battery to me, but whatever. And then you just simply click and drag to set your range and then go ahead and make your adjustments up, down, whatever you want to do. Uh, that's a lot faster actually to do it that way. And if you want to get even more control, what you can do is simply, now I want to go back to the select tool, simply hold down the option key, and then when you get that little symbol, click to start setting your keyframes. I'm going to do two and three and four. So that gives you a little bit more manual control over adjusting your volume. Excellent. Now, another couple of options for um, adjusting your volume is, let's select the clip, and let's say I want the volume for that entire clip to be set at exactly plus three decibels. Go to Modify, Adjust Volume, and Absolute. Now, see here, here's where I'm gonna just simply press the three key and hit return and there we go. Now you can see that my uh, all my keyframes went away obviously because I'm setting an absolute value. There's no, there aren't going to be any regions or ranges where it's going to go up and down. Let me command Z to go back one step, select the clip again and now let's see what happens. Modify, adjust volume, now I'm going to do relative and now I'm going to punch in minus four and hit enter and everything drops by minus four. It keeps all my keyframes so all the changes are maintained nicely. Cool. Let's get out of that one. And the last thing we're going to talk about today is fading audio. Um, yeah, and these are the little guys right here. Just hover over them, click and drag, and you can uh, fade the audio in or you can fade the audio out. You can see I have two completely different shapes here, and the way to control that is to hover over the little control guy there uh, and do um, control click. Then you get your options, obviously. Linear. Uh, linear, obviously, is a constant rate of change of the audio. The S-curve is, you can see, 
and the plus three decibels, minus three decibels. Uh, I've got minus three decibels here, which means the change comes in on the in point. It comes in slowly and then it accelerates. On this one, if I were to choose that one, then as you can see, it comes in quickly and then it slows down. And you've got the S curve also. One nice little tip you're going from adjacent your, your your audio from adjacent clips is to set one of these guys at uh, minus three decibels. Come over to the other guy and also set him at minus three decibels. Now you go ahead, like all other things, uh, experiment with this thing and see which one you like best. But I actually, in terms of the audio, like this best when I'm jumping from one. Uh, clip to another clip I like that particular style and very last thing we're going to do today is we're going to look at audio in transitions now I'm going to do command plus to zoom in on the transition and I'll click on the transition and as you can see in the transition inspector I have the same options to set the audio when two clips are transitioning in this, what I have here, was it, which is a cross dissolve. Now, I've got them both set at S curve right here. I might set them both at that minus three decibels. I like the shape of that. And you won't see it, um, but believe me, it's still there. And that's about all I wanted to go over today with this. Check out our other audio tutorials where we get uh, into greater and greater depth on all sorts of stuff, including stuff like how to sync audio and video, enhancing your audio, audio effects, multi-channel audio editing, and um, yeah, even more. Thanks a lot for watching. Come back and visit us again soon.